do I sense we're ready? Look, in many ways, yes, and in many ways, we never will be. But the question that I would ask is, if not now, when? You know, the Professor Witty said that the virus would return uh, and it would meet a wall of vaccinated people. That is exactly what's happening. If it is going to be an endemic disease, which it is with us forever, which it will be regrettably, then we have to decide when do we exit the what we call non-pharmaceutical interventions, uh, so, so lockdown restrictions, etc. And and you either do that in the middle of summer, or you or you then keep pushing that, and the later the year, the greater the other respiratory illnesses become, and then you have an even more difficult exit wave, and that's really what we're looking at. As far as where the public are, I mean, I, I hear this view that the public opinion is more cautious than people speaking, speaking like I am. Um, but as you rightly said, I'm a former public health minister. I'm not a gangbusters, let it rip, irresponsible. I, I, I just think that we have to see this in the round. I don't think by any measure are we currently in an emergency. There is no measure by which the NHS is currently overwhelmed and so the only question really guys is if not now when and uh, and that's a great song and it's got a good ring to it uh, can i ask you as a as a man who looks at the health issues do you think in a year's time we will regret from a health point of view that we were so stringent for so long and so focused on one particular threat to our health covid it's a very serious one but what mm. we are likely to see now is it not true is a whole surge in horrendous killers that have always been there, cancer and heart disease, not to mention uh, dementia and mental ill health among the young. All of that has been exasperated by, by COVID, and, and, and that should be the focus going forwards. Well, look, I mean, we did have an emergency this time last year, or last March, rather, and we had no choice but to implement the non-pharmaceutical interventions that I talk about, and that is stopping people having having as human contact as much as possible. But we had no choice of that. But, I mean, I'm sorry to be gloomy on a Monday morning, but the, the bottom line is, is that I have long since said, and I maintain that view, that I think some of the worst effects of COVID are still to come. And one of the things which you allude to, and I was the cancer minister for two and a half years, is the, the number of unpresented cancers that are still to come. I mean, look, we know that if you present at stage one, then you have a, a much, much greater chance of, of, of survival. If you present at stage two and three, uh, you, you most certainly don't. The later you present with cancer, the worse it gets. If you place COVID in the, in the league table of excess deaths today, it would be about number six behind cancer first, dementia, people taking their own lives, road traffic accidents. Um, so I suppose the other way that I look at this is if you were to arrive at this point in time uh, without everything that's gone before, you look at the hospitalization rates, you look at the serious illness rates, you look at the, 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 the sad small number of people that are losing their lives to, to COVID still, would you really implement any of these measures, given that you have a vaccination program such as we do? I, I, I don't believe that we would. And, you know, I, I just would say on the mask issue, because that's obviously going to be the debate of the day. And we have a statement later on this evening in the House from the health sector at the same time as the Prime Minister is doing a statement to the media after his ticking off from the Speaker. And I would just caution against advice around masks. I, I will wear a mask when I'm on the tube because I don't really want to get flu and I, and I don't really want to get a cold. Um, that's my choice and that's my personal choice. If you have advice, then you will basically give an inch and those who are uber cautious, the train companies, etc., will take a mile. And that's not a prediction on my part. Just look at what's happening in schools right now. Look at the way that, that some people have taken the rules around or the guidance around bubbles and decided that if you are one child in a bubble of 60 and one person test positive, the whole bubble is out. It, I raised this in the House last Monday, and it's had huge pickups since, as you know, and the government have, have moved on this. But as I also said in the House last week, I'm interested in a change of tone from the new health secretary, who I welcome and is who a good friend, but I want to see a change of policy. And, um, you know, we will see this evening in the House as to whether there is a change of policy.